Once you find yourself in conflict with a narcissist, it's a virtual guarantee they're going to start playing head games with you. That's why I put together a new course. It's very extensive called Anger Games. I'm going to teach you how to manage anger and conflict with a narcissist. There's a link below that's going to show you how to register, and I hope that you find it to be very insightful. Let's begin with a question that puts you in touch with your basic humanity, and that is, you ever feel angry? And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Now, sometimes we tend to think in stereotypes regarding anger. You know, that person is screaming at the top of their lungs and making everybody else feel awkward and uncomfortable and throwing things and all the rest, and that, of course, is anger. But anger is so much more than that. Uh, we have our anger in our moments of frustration or annoyance or impatience or irritability. Anger can show up in many, many different ways. We all feel it. The next question is, do you like feeling angry? Now, speaking personally, and I imagine most of you would uh, agree with me on this, it's like, well, no, it's not exactly like I seek it out. It's not like I want to be that way. Sometimes it's there. I don't like it, but there it is. Narcissists, however, you'll find that the more you're around them, it's like they keep going back to it. It's like, yeah, this is serving my purpose, and we're going to get to that because they actually do like what anger does to them, that surge of power that it gives them. But then let's ratchet it up a little bit and ask, do you need to cling to your anger? Now, in a healthy um, mindset or personality, we say, okay, I have my moments of anger, but I need to finish it because I have higher priorities is what I call it that I need to pursue. The uh, the angry individual, they don't go after, uh, the narcissistic person doesn't go after their higher priorities. They'll stay to their ang uh, inside their anger and hold on to it in a perpetual kind of way. It serves a purpose for them. Now, we're going to get to that. Now, I want you to think first, how many times when you have, when you know you're going to be around that narcissistic person, have you thought, well, I know that when I'm with that person, something's going to happen. They're going to get ticked off. They always do. Or you might think that person can argue with a tree stump or once you get on their bad list, it's kind of hard to get off of it. You know, you know that these individuals, when they go into that anger space, they can't get out of it. They can't pull out of it. The implication is it serves some sort of function for them and, uh, and they, they have to have it. Um, by the way, just to give you a clue as to what function it serves for them, I want you to think about a little quiz. Pop, okay. Pop quiz time. Uh, the, the pop quiz is, do you know the most frequently used word? that narcissists will use when they're in their anger mindset? Very simple. It's the little bitty word, you. They go into that blaming and accusing kind of mode. You did this and you said that. And why do you have to be this way? And if you would only this. And they, uh, they're they highly, highly focused on who you are and what you are doing to make them feel uncomfortable. Uh, it's very much an externally based mindset. There, there's not a sense of mutuality in the least. It's all about who you are. When narcissists feel angry, there are three things that they're hoping to accomplish, and these three things will give us a strong clue about why they cling and hold on to their anger. They need the anger. The first thing they're wanting to accomplish is they want to establish dominance. They want to establish themselves as the power broker, and by golly, you better know who that is, and you better fall in line. The second thing they're hoping to accomplish is they want to diminish you. They don't want to hear from you. They don't care about empathy. They don't care about mutuality. So the more they can imply you won't bring anything good to the equation, you're no good, you're just a, my nemesis, then uh, to them, mission accomplished. And then the third thing they're wanting to accomplish, and this may be the biggest thing of all, is they want to keep the focus off of their own inadequacies. That's where that word you comes in. As long as they can keep pushing the uh, the narrative onto you, you did this and you did that, then they don't have to say, well, I need to take a look at my role in this too, because they don't like to do that. In their anger, narcissists are conveying, I'm not at peace with myself. I feel pain. I feel hurt within myself. Life confuses me. People confuse me. People disappoint me. That's what's going on inside. And, and you know, frankly, we all can have those kind of thoughts in, inwardly, 
but um, they uh, they hold on to the anger so much so that they don't get to a place where they address it in a constructive kind of way. It's constantly diminishing another individual. Let's keep in mind the reason narcissists cling to their anger is it keeps it allows them to keep the focus on anyone and everyone but themselves. Now, uh, when we uh, uh, when we have our, our anger moments, it's fair game for me to sit down and say, hey, I feel angry, you feel angry, or you're hurt, or I'm hurt, or there's something going on here. Let's talk. And the, the goal that we would have would be to try to find some form of mutuality so that we can move on to other kinds of things that are not anger related. Narcissists don't do that. Instead, what we have there with them is uh, they have multiple uh, patterns that they uh, get into that's all a part of keeping the focus uh, away from themselves. Narcissists in their anger make heavy use of blaming and accusing statements. Uh, it's a whole lot easier than self-reflection. You see, uh, self-reflection requires an examination of yourself in an honest kind of way. And so it's like, mm, I've been told about some of my faults by other people in my past. They've been judged and it hasn't worked out very well for me. So I'd rather just not reflect on me because it, it hasn't worked. Uh, I'd rather just keep the focus on you. Another thing that uh, in their anger and they're clinging to the anger that it tells us is that these individuals have a gross underdevelopment in the art of contemplative communication. I like it when I, uh, if, if somebody comes along and says, well, I'm, I'm really feeling frustrated to say, well, let's talk about it and let's find out who you are and what your hopes and desires would be. Narcissists don't do that. They, they don't like to go into that contemplative thing. Again, it's just the blame and accusation in the mind of the, of the, uh, uh, the narcissist. They think, well, if I can call, uh, uh, prove that you are the chief cause to my problems, that I'm exonerated. And as a result, they, they, they look for reasons to explain why you are the cause for their anger. It's important for you to remind yourself, if you weren't the one on the scene that they're throwing their anger into, it'd be someone else. It's not about you. It's not about the person in front. Uh, you're just the, the receptacle. They just have anger. They need somebody to pour it into. Um, basically, when uh, narcissists hold on to their anger toward you, it's their way of saying, I don't want to face my inner demons. I don't want to face my tension. I don't want to feel bad about myself. And, and as a result, uh, the hyper-focus allows them to do that. Narcissists have to have someone to scapegoat. By that, I mean to pour their pain and their energy into so that they don't have to deal with their own. Why is that? Because down at the base of it all, uh, they, they feel inept in conflict resolution skills. I don't know how to deal with people. I don't know how to manage differences. Differences are going to show up, but I'm sorely lacking in those coping skills. It's just a whole lot easier to focus on you as opposed to focusing on us and all the, the, the things that go along with it. Let's remind ourselves that healthy anger uh, has its purpose. Uh, in your healthy anger, you are wanting to stand up to people or circumstances that will negate human worth, that will negate valid needs, that will negate your guiding principles and convictions. And so it's not as though all anger is completely misguided or uh, uh, ill-informed. Uh, but when we have healthy anger, it means that we're going to uh, preserve ourselves uh, while also preserving the respectability of the relationship. You want to maintain civility and dignity so that there can be a potential for adjustment and harmony. The, uh, the angry narcissist has a beginning point that says, I don't see my shared humanity with you. You, you have problems. We're not going to talk about mine. I don't see you as equal to me. Uh, I have to be superior. I don't see that uh, there's any need for constructive dialogue because that means I have to tend to you. I'm just going to tell. And then uh, th they don't see the need for team building because that implies uh, you know, some, probably some compromise on both sides, and that's a nasty word for them. So the narcissist is going to be thinking, you know, all you people over there on Team Healthy that try to talk about this uh, appropriate way of dealing with anger, you're full of baloney. They probably won't say it quite that nicely. It sounds wimpy to them to say, let's manage anger cleanly. 
Um, the narcissist in their mind, they're thinking, all I want is power. And uh, that implies making you feel powerless. And in the end, I win. Ultimately, narcissists cannot understand or accept the concept of our interconnectedness. We're all so interconnected on so many different levels that it makes sense to say, if I hurt and if you hurt, let's figure out what we can do so that we can encourage one another. Um, I'd like to be a source for healing. I'd like to join you in that effort. Would you like to do that with me? And the narcissist is like, uh, my, my hurt is too bad. Uh, my pain is too strong. Uh, my uh, my uh, ineptness is too ever present. I felt judged. I felt condemned by other individuals. Therefore, I'm not interested in going into that. I'm going to hold on to my anger in a way that's just a dominant game playing tool that I can use against you because it keeps me from having to examine all of that stuff that's going on on the inside of me. That's why they cling to their anger toward you. I'm hoping that you can uh, decide as an alternative. You know, there's too much condemnation already in this world. There's too much harshness and meanness, and I don't want to contribute to that. When I feel angry, I'm going to acknowledge it. I'm going to see the legitimacy of it. I'm going to do the best that I can to approach it with dignity, respect, and civility. That's what I stand for. And the narcissist thinks, mm, that puts me too much on equal uh, footing with other individuals. I don't do equal. So they stay in anger and you stay in your constant uh, uh, place of distance. Rightly so. Uh, I'm hoping that you can be the kind of person that says, I'm willing. When the narcissist says, I'm not, I have to have my anger. It's like, good to know. I'll make my plans accordingly. And it looks like we're not going to be able to have any depth at all in the relationship. I'll set my boundaries. I'll set my stipulations. I'll set my consequences. I'm not going to tangle with you in your unhealthiness. I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you might be up against. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Gus and I will keep more videos coming in your direction. Sometimes when you're dealing with things like this, it can be so essential to have someone as a therapist, like a therapist to guide you along the way. You know, I've been sponsored for years by the people at betterhelp.com. There's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can help you sift this out. It's so helpful to, uh, to know that someone says, let's talk. I want to know who you are, what your circumstances are, how we can uh, work our way together so that you can get to a better place. If the need is there, please go through the link and get the assistance that you need. You know that I have courses uh, that are available. On, they're online classes. My newest one is called uh, Anger Games. It's about how the narcissists will pull you into their um, manipulations with their anger. And the whole thrust of it is to uh, to stay out of that. And so that's uh, each, each of my courses has at least 25 uh, teaching videos with uh, documentation that go along with it and, uh, and guided questions. And so you might want to look into that along with other courses like uh, This Is Me about establishing your uh, boundaries free to be, uh, ready, set, connect about uh, finding yourself and, and having healthy relationships. So we have plenty of those kind of things. It's an investment that you would make in yourself. Along with that, I also have my webinars that have been presented. They're of a different nature, a 90-minute uh, presentation. Along with my, on our website, we have my articles and uh, <clears throat> access to the, uh, to the podcast, my books, plenty of resources. I'm hoping that you can be the, a student of emotions, of psychology, of who you are, so that you can say, well, I've got a game plan. And it's a healthy game plan. The narcissist has a game plan, and that is, yeah, I'm going to dominate you, and I'm going to avoid examining me. That's why they hold on to their anger, and that's a plan that's um, guaranteed to take them straight into the ditch. And if they're going to lay in the ditch, I'm not jumping in the, down in that ditch with them. I hope instead that you can have a sense of intentionality and steadiness, and ultimately that as you manage your emotions cleanly like we're talking about, it can prompt you to be that person of peace. The narcissist may not join you there, but I'm hoping you can be in your place of peace nonetheless.